So at the top of page 531, you have some space. And we're going to summarize what happens when you have all four of these transformations. Oh, that's a D. what we're going to do as a special order for this. If you wanted to, you can still work with, start with your five original points that makes either your sine graph or your cosine graph, and you can work left to right with your points just like we did in the transformations unit. However, having all of the pi values and things involved, you're going to find that this special order is going to make graphing these a lot quicker and a lot easier. And it's based on the characteristics that we looked at in 6.5. How your A value affected your amplitude, your B value affected your period, your C value affected your starting point, and your D value affected your sinusoidal axis. And so the order that we're going to use these transformations, when you have all four of them at the same time, I've made it into an acronym so that you can remember it, hopefully easier. The acronym is DAB-C. So if DAB is easy to remember, then you should be able to do these no problem. So the D value is the first thing that you're going to do. You're going to look at your entire equation, and you're going to say, my D value is my center line. So the first thing you're going to do is label your sinusoidal axis. And we'll do an example with all four of the values in there so that you can see how this works right after. A is your amplitude. You're going to Mark your maximum and minimum values using your amplitude and your sinusoidal axis. So once you've labeled your center line, your amplitude goes up from that center line to your maximum and down from that center line to your minimum. Your B value is going to help you calculate your period. Your B value isn't your period, but remember we have that formula that your period is 2 pi over your B value. So once you've calculated your period, just like we did every single time when we graphed in 6.5, you're going to label your period on your x-axis and divide it into four equal sections. So you're going to label your period and divide it into four equal sections. Now, the reason I call it dab C is because you do the dab all at once. And after you've done the dab, you temporarily you temporarily sketch 
without the phase shift or without the translation. And then we'll do our C value when we have a temporarily, temporary sketch and your temporary sketch, do it with the dotted line because it's not your final graph. And once you have that dotted line, it's going to be very easy to take the key points, those maximums, middle, minimums, and shift them left or right. So then at the bottom of page 631, you have some space there. We're going to do an example. We're going to do an example which has all of our values. So y equals we'll just do one with positive amplitude right now. I'll give you some additional notes this afternoon with negative amplitudes. But we're going to have three cos bracket. I'll already have our B value factored out for you. I'll change that last number to a 2, just so all of our numbers are different. There we go, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to graph y equals 3 cos pi x minus 1 minus 2 on with all of those things. So if we go through the dab C procedure, we can have our graph ready to go. We start with our D value. Can you see that it's a minus 2? So that means we are going to go down to minus 2 with a dotted line across, we can label our center line at minus 2. That's the D value, dab. The next is our A value. Our amplitude is 3. So now we can use our amplitude to label our maximum and our minimum using our amplitude and our sinusoidal axis. So our sinusoidal axis is at minus 2. If our amplitude is 3, that means we'll go up 3, 1, 2, 3, to 1, and positive 1 will be our maximum value, and we'll go down 3, 1, 2, 3, to minus 5, and minus 5 will be our minimum value. Off to the side, because now that we've done the D and the A for dab, we've got to do our B value. Our B value is going to help us calculate our period, and our period is 2 pi divided by our B value, and that simplifies to just be 2. So we go along our axis and we mark 2 and divide it into four equal sections. Half of 2 is 1, half of 1 is a half, 0 0.5, this will be 1.5. After you've done all the things for dab, we temporarily sketch our graph. So I'm going to take what I have here. I'm going to say, what kind of graph is it? It's a cos graph. Where does a cos graph normally start? It starts at a maximum. So I start at my maximum, which is 1. And I go max to center line to minimum to center line to maximum. And I temporarily graph it, so I'm just going to use a dotted line because this is the graph without a phase shift. I'm going to do my final graph in a different color. Now we can do our phase shift. What is our phase shift? 
it's got to shift one to the right. So what is that going to do with this starting point that was at our maximum? Can you see that that's going to go one to the right over there? Our second point, one to the right, will go over here. We're going to have to label some additional points on here. This point, one to the right, will be here, and this point, one to the right, will be there. So again, can you see that each of these has gone one to the right? And we can now draw our graph with a solid line. There's our final graph, putting all of those things together. So we start with our D value, our center line. Then we use our amplitude to label what our maximum point is and what our minimum point is. Then we go to our B value to calculate our period. In this case, it was 2. And we divided that into four equal sections, which allowed us to temporarily sketch our graph. And that temporary sketch is really helpful because you get an idea of what it looks like, and then you can use that to shift it. In this case, we had to shift one to the right. And we took all of our temporary points and shifted them one to the right, and we ended with that purple graph. The only thing that we're going to add to this this afternoon is what happens if you have like a negative in front? Well, that just affects your starting point. Coast normally starts at a maximum. If you had a negative in front, it's going to start at a minimum. Sine normally starts in the middle going up. If you have a negative, it's going to start in the middle going down. And that's what the negative is going to do. So we'll add some notes on negatives this afternoon. But for now, that is the DAB-C technique for graphing sine and cosine.